Analyzing Missing Migrants Part 2, Aggregating by Month. So far we've got this scatter plot here. It shows one point for each of our original events. But this does not answer my original question, namely, for each month, how many migrants are dead and missing? To figure this out, we need to do something called aggregation. The word aggregation has many different meanings, but in computer science, an aggregate function is a function where rows are grouped together to form a single summary value. What we're looking at here is a data reduction technique called binned aggregation. In binned aggregation, you take each of these points and the first step is to classify them into bins. In the case of our data set and our goal of aggregating by month, each month is a bin. So the first step is to figure out, okay, for each of these events, which month did it occur in? So that's the binning part. And then there's the aggregation part, applying the aggregation function. In the case of this picture here, the aggregation function is count. See, in this bin here, there are two elements, and the summary value is two. In this bin, there are zero. In this bin, there are four. In this bin, there's one. And in this bin, there are two. That's the abstract concept of binned aggregation in a nutshell, using count. Count is just one of many aggregation functions that we could use, including average, maximum, median, minimum, mode, range, and sum. Summation is what we want to do in our case. In our case, we want to consider each month to be a bin, and then take the sum total of dead and missing across that whole month and assign each month a summary value, which is that sum total. But how can we do this in code? Luckily, the D3 array package contains a function for binned aggregation called D3.bin. And by the way, D3.bin used to be called D3.histogram. So if you see that in some existing examples, don't get confused. Uh, you can just rename histogram to bin. But anyway, this is the function we need to use to do bin aggregation. In our code, let's get started by importing bin from D3. What we're going to do here is actually a data transformation where we take the original data as input and then as output we get the aggregated data, which is actually a quite a different data set. The columns of the aggregated data are going to be month and sum total of dead and missing. So let's go about producing that derived data set from the original data set using d3.bin. In our code here, we've got this use data hook. So right after this guard that checks if the data is there or not, we can define binned data to be bin, uh, d3.bin, but how do we use d3.bin? Invoking d3.bin constructs a new bin generator with the default settings. Calling that bin generator with the data bins the given iterable of data samples, meaning it actually performs the binning. But how does it know how to do the binning? I mean, what's the function that determines which bin each thing is in? Well, that's where bin.value comes in. I'm pretty sure we need to specify as our bin.value a function that returns the date. So for our bin generator, let's specify bin.value to be what was our x value. You know, I think I'll move these definitions up above where we define our binned data so that I can just use x value as the value for our binning, which will return the reported date. All right, what's next? In addition to bin.value, 
we've got bin.domain and bin.thresholds. These two things are required to complete the definition or the setup of our bin generator. For example, if you're using the bin generator in conjunction with a linear scale x, you might just use the domain of the scale and use the ticks of that scale as the thresholds. I think we should be able to do the same kind of a thing even if we have a time scale instead of a linear scale. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to copy this code just for reference and in our code I will paste it and instead of x I'm going to call it x scale because that's what we're using already but that's defined way down here so I think what I'll do is I'll just move the definition of our bin data to come after the definition of our x and y scales let's see if all of this actually works by invoking our bin generator and passing in our data and then we can console.log bin data and see what comes out oh no an error d3.bin is not a function all right i think this is a versioning problem where the d3 array package has been updated but the whole d3 package itself has not been updated with the latest version of d3 array so the solution is we can just use uh, histogram instead which is the old name for bin here's what i'll do actually so our code is uh, forward compatible i'll I import histogram as bin from d3 you can use this syntax to rename things as you import them okay now what gets printed out with console.log bin data is this array of 25 arrays in the first of these elements we've got 49 entries and we also have these properties x0 and x1 this is the extent of this bin it goes from January 1st to April 1st I think we're getting some arbitrarily sized uh, bins here because we're using xscale.ticks xscale.ticks will not necessarily give us months it'll give us tick marks that depend on the extent of the data so we're asking for approximately 20 ticks but we know that we want months so we can do something more precise than this and be guaranteed to get months back out namely we can use d3 time d3 time has some amazing utility functions for dealing with intervals of time for example minutes hours days weeks months years one category of these utility functions is ranges for example d3.time months will return to us all the months in between a given start and stop date so what we can do here is we can take our domain of our time scale which has the beginning and ending date for the whole data set pass that into d3 time months and use that set of months as the bins for our histogram all right first things first we need to import time months from d3 and then when we construct our bins instead of passing x scale dot ticks of 20 we can use time months from some start to some stop and let me define start and stop to be x scale dot domain what's happening here is x scale dot domain returns an array of two elements the start and the stop and then this syntax here is ES6 destructuring syntax that unpacks that array of two elements into these two local variables start and stop which we can then pass into time months so now if we take a look at this output from console.log bin data oh no there's a syntax error it looks like uh, missing a parenthesis there we go 
Oh no, d3 dot time months is not a function? Why would time months not be a function? Well, uh, how are we invoking this? Okay, I think I see the issue here. We're calling the return value from this with dot data, which is not right. We should be calling the return value from thresholds with data like this. And when I auto format this with prettier, it just happens to end up at the end. All right, now let's take a look at these arrays that we've got. The first array has 16 elements and they all look like they're in January. And look at that. This bin goes from January 1st, 2014 to February 1st, 2014. All right, this is a good indication that we've got our bins correct. But let's take stock of what we've got. We've got this array of arrays. Each array has the events that fall into that month. But we still have not done the summation. That's actually sort of an, another step that we need to do. So let's go about computing the sum total dead and missing for each month using this array of arrays. To do this, we can use d3.sum, which takes as input an iterable, for example, one of our arrays, and an accessor, for example, a function that returns the count of dead and missing for that event. Here's what I'm thinking can be our general approach to this. We've got an array of arrays. Each of those arrays has x0 and x1 being the dates for the start and the end of that bin. I'm thinking we can just add another property onto each one of those nested arrays, namely the sum total. Or maybe, now that I think of it, it might be better to just get rid of those internal arrays and transform each one of those inner arrays into an object that just has x0, x1 being the dates, and the sum total of dead and missing. I think that would be less confusing than keeping these nested arrays around, because after we've done the aggregation, the summation, we don't need those nested arrays anymore. So let's do it like that. To do that, we can call dot map on these arrays. This function can take as input one of these arrays and return as output an object. This object can have as one property, let's call it total dead and missing. And this can be the sum over this array. And keep in mind, this array is the array of individual events that belong to a single month. And remember, sum takes as input two arguments. The first argument is the array, and the second argument is the accessor function. And I believe we already have a y accessor function defined. Yeah, y value is d at total dead and missing. So we can just use y value as the second argument to sum. Now, if we take a look at the resulting output, this binned data, Oh no, sum is not defined. Right, right, right. We need to import sum from D3. So I'll add it right here. And then what do we get as output? 72 objects that have the total dead and missing. All right. This is exactly what we need, but there's something missing, namely the time, the month for each of these. To bring back the extent we can just say, okay, x0 is array.x0, and the same thing for x1. I'm pretty sure it was called x0 and x1. Uh, these were the names for the extent of each bin, and these should be dates. All right, now we've got this array of 72 objects, each of which have total data missing, x0 as a date, and x1 as a date. All right, we've done the aggregation part. Now we need to visualize this transformed data. This kind of data is typically visualized as a histogram using bars to represent these uh, sum totals. So let's try that. 
All right, now that we've got our binned data, how do we go about visualizing this? Well, you know, there is one little problem, and that is that the Y scale is not quite right. If we take a look at how the Y scale is defined, its domain is defined as the extent of the data over Y value. But the thing is, the extent really should go from zero to this total, or rather, the maximum total here. So here's what I think I'll do. I'll move the definition of our Y scale to come after the definition of our binned data so that we can use this value here in computing the Y scale. Just to make this sort of uh, generic, I'm just going to rename that to be Y. Now, when we set up our Y scale, the domain, uh, since it's going to be a histogram, I strongly argue that the domain should start at zero. That way the area of these bars corresponds to the actual numbers, which wouldn't be the case if it did not start at zero. And the max value of the domain will be the max, d3.max, over our binned data using an accessor that just returns d.y. And this d dot y is the same as this y here. Now our y scale should be correct. To double check that, we can just console.log y scale dot domain. And we get this array of two elements where the maximum is 1583. This means that the maximum sum total of dead and missing for a single month is this number. And that sounds, it looks about right to me. All right, now let's go about visualizing this. I'll get rid of this console.log. And then when we invoke our marks component, instead of passing in data, I'm going to pass in binned data. Since binned data has x0 and x1 and y, these x value and y value accessor functions no longer really serve a purpose. They don't make any sense, so I'm just going to delete those. Now let's go over to our marks component, change data to bind data, get rid of these value accessors, and I think as a first pass I'd like to just get it working with circles, which we will eventually change to rectangles. Instead of x value of d, we can just use d.x0. And instead of y value of d, we can use d.y. And since we renamed data to bind data, we need to refer to that variable. And let's see if this worked. x value is not defined. Well, that's for our tooltip. I think the tooltip should show the sum total, which is going to be d.y. All right, now we've got something. Check that out. This is showing the sum total for each month, but as points. Let's change this to use rectangles instead, which is the traditional way of encoding uh, histograms. To do that, I'll change circle here to rect, and also change it down here. I'll change cx to just x, and cy to y. And circle radius does not make sense anymore, so I'll delete that from our props. And since these are rectangles, they need to have width and height. So we can set the width to be... Well, the width is going to have to be the difference between x scale of d dot x 0 and x scale of d dot x 1. I think that should be correct for our width. And our height should be, well, since y scale of d dot y gives us the top of our bar, we need to compute the height as inner height minus y scale of d dot y. And inner height I don't think is defined in this scope, so let me add inner height as another prop. And then in index.js, where we have inner height defined, we can pass in inner height to our marks component, 
by saying, okay, inner height equals inner height. And boom, we get a nice, beautiful histogram. All right, that's how you can create a date histogram that aggregates by month. Now, this is showing the sum total of dead and missing for each month, where the area of these bars corresponds to those values. To recap how all this works, we compute the binned data with this expression here, which creates a bin generator, sets the value accessor to x value, which returns the date, sets the domain to the domain of the x scale, namely the extent of dates, the min and max date for the whole data set, sets the thresholds of this bin generator to be all months between start and stop, which are computed here from the x scale domain. That expression constructs the bin generator, which we then pass the original data into. The return value from this expression is that array of arrays. This call to dot map processes each one of those inner arrays, and each one of these arrays represents all the events that happened in any given month. Each one of those arrays is transformed into an object that contains the original x0 and x1 generated by the bin generator, namely the start date and end date for each bin. And each of these objects also contains a y property, which is the sum of our y value accessor over that month's array. This is where the total dead and missing across all events for a single month is computed. The return value from that invocation of dot map is then assigned to be binned data. Based on that, we compute the domain of the y scale to be the max over binned data of those y properties. And then when we render our marks, we pass in the binned data and also the inner height, which we were not passing in before. And then in our marks component, we create a rectangle for each element of that binned data array, where x is the x scale of d dot x zero. This makes sense because x zero is the earlier of the two dates, x zero and x one, and the x coordinate of a rectangle is the left side of the rectangle. And then y is y scale of d dot y, and then the width is the distance between x1 and x0 after being passed through the x scale. And then the height is inner height minus x scale of d dot y. And the title, meaning the, the tooltip, is tooltip format of d dot y. So if we hover, we should get those total values, but oddly we're getting some dates. I think that's something I just forgot to update. If we specify tooltip format to just be the identity function, d goes to d, now I think if we hover, we should get the total for each month, and indeed we do. It looks like this month was the biggest month with 1583. All right, that's how you can make date histograms. That's all for Analyzing Missing Migrants Part 2, Aggregation by Month.